here we go. So immediately on that blue side, we are going to see that Aurelia band coming okay. out and the Zack band. So again, the Aurelia scaring the other team. Again, quick thing, you guys. Team names, blue side is Gromp. And red side is Team Um. Yeah, uh, because they couldn't pick up a name, actually. It was kind of an awkward situation. Yeah, but so I really like seeing the Irelia and the Zag on the ban list. Clearly, they watched the last game and saw how dominant the Irelia was, saw, saw how influential the Zag was inside all of those gank attempts. So it's, it's going to be a different game because those champions are gone. All right, so if you look at this, uh, all the bans from Team Gromp there, um, those are all champions that were in the last game. Twitch, uh, I don't know if he had that big of an impact, but that is a good ban there. Yeah, uh, on the red side, we do see the Blitzcrank and Azir ban, as well as a Misfortune. So again, that team fight oriented kind of picks, they're kind of avoiding. So hopefully they're going to try and go for a more pick base as we're going to have the Soraka locked in right away. So Healbot coming out right off the bat. Well, actually, less of a heal bot than she was now. This is patch 6.19, so that change where her uh, W uh, cooldown was increased by about double. double. at yeah. rank 1, actually. It is it is a quite an amount that it got changed down to. But, um, I mean, if you are doing it uh, efficiently, you're, you're still going to be able to do what Soraka does best, and that's keep your teammates alive. All right, as we do see the Shravana also getting locked in. I haven't seen a whole lot of Shravana as of late. I remember back when it was uh, the Devourer Shauna, uh, where you got oh. that double proc on the queue. It was disgusting. Uh, we do see a Tarek getting locked in as well. Uh, again, trying to survive a lot of that kind of all-in potential. We haven't really seen it, so they're kind of more going for that team comp. Most likely going to be a Morgana mid, the way it's going, as we do have a Kennen also locked in. Yeah, that Tarek looking like he's going to go support. Actually, if you look at Team Gromp here, it's actually uh, Team Purple so far. So if they pick another purple champion there, uh, they got a full Team Purple going on. All right. So Jace being hovered over is going to get locked in. So we do see the Jace, I'm going to say, most likely up in that top lane. Valkots, uh probably going to be mid lane if you have a Soraka there. Not going to be the Valkots support. As Caitlyn and Amumu being hovered right now. Though I like the idea from blue side, I don't feel like they have a whole, they don't have enough damage at the moment. They only have a Kennen and a Caitlyn at the moment. It is going to be an AP Morgana, uh, but again, she doesn't really ramp up until later. So Amumu going to get ahead, go ahead and get locked in, looking to get those picks. You know what, if, if uh, blue team is able to get the wombo combo that is their team fight, so let's say Amumu grabbing them all with their ult, Morgana grabbing it all with their ult, Kennen's able to come in, and uh, so is Caitlyn, and Tarek's able to defend his teammates, making them invulnerable with his new ultimate. Uh, what did you think of the changes for Tarek back when he, uh, he did get changed? Well, I, I wasn't originally a Tarek player, I didn't play him too often, he kind of was a stale champ to play, it was a point and click dazzle, so you're like, ooh, I stunned you, ha ha, now what do I do? I really like that they adjusted, he kind of has a Lulu style gameplay now where he, he can work off his other teammates, which I think is a really cool and you, it's not it's not entirely unique, but it's, it's, it's a nice adaptation that really fits him actually, I think cinematically. Yeah, especially, it was a time where uh, supports were getting changed and he definitely fit the role of, uh, uh, you know, he, he provides the uh, CC that his team needs a lot better than he did before. Mm -hmm. So we do see that Sivir getting locked in now. So again, there's your team comps. Most, I, I, I honestly, could go either way on blue side. You could see a Morgana top. I, I know we have a friend that used to play that all the damn time. Uh, and we do, there is also Cannon. Uh, if they are going to do a double TP, they got to use it effectively. They can't just sit on those TPs and just use it to get back into lane. Again, that's what double TP excels into. I'm really excited if Sivir does go for the ignite here. No heal. It's going to be a kill lane, hopefully. As you know, we are just going to go ahead and wait. We are just waiting for one coach to go off stage at the moment. As we wait here, so. And what are you thinking? I, I, you got a real pokey comp style team for your red side here. Uh, again, you got that Jace and that Valkos. Jace, again, 
insane amount of burst and poke actually if you start getting ahead start getting that armor pin actually those armor pin adjustments to items at the beginning of the season really helped him out mm -hmm. uh meanwhile you kind of have a Velkos, which he did get a little shifted he's he's very uh true damage oriented right now so it should be interesting to see i'm i'm looking at the sivir here and it looks like this team's going to want to engage first because uh, even though Sivir has uh, that ability to make her team run away and potentially disengage, if even one member of, of uh, her team gets caught by a Morgana Snare or a, a Mumu a Mumu stun, um, it, it's not going to look good for them even if they do try to run away. It's, it's almost a guaranteed kill if one member gets caught. So they're going to want to engage first. Now, I don't know if this was intentional. But red sides bands. What do they spell out? They spell out bam. They're going for that oh. that bam effect. They're going. They're gonna go all in with this comp. Actually, with the Jace and Sever, you have a lot of engage potential. Uh, you're gonna be sped up with the acceleration gate as well as on the hunt as well. Um, and then that's gonna really just let Shavana get into the deep line. She doesn't have flash. She actually took exhaust. So looking to maybe duel. Uh, a Mumu in the jungle a couple times and really you don't really need exhaust when you're going against a Mumu But it's yeah. a nice thing you have two exhausts on an already not really heavy damage team You use that on Caitlyn and use it on Kennen You don't have any damage coming out after that and it's gonna really hurt blue side if they can't really Really force that right off the bat in the early in the game. Yeah, blue side definitely needs that team fight to happen. I think um Lots, yeah, it's almost like uh, hunters and gazelles there because uh, blue team has a lot of traps they can put on for uh, red team. And if red team gets caught by one of them, that's it. Um, but if they can run away and keep poking, hit and run strategies, then they're able to do. They're going to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, and then hopefully it'll be enough for Shivana to just come in and wreck things up. Yeah. So we are about to get into our game here very shortly. We are just waiting on that spectator delay. Oh, it's going to be the day when we can disable that. That's going to be fun. We are just waiting in here really quickly. Have you seen any uh, interesting cosplays around here, Jacob? I saw Battle Bunny Riven. It was so cool. That was actually really well done. I got to give it to her that. She did a really good job from what I saw. Um, again, it's going to be interesting to see how well... I want to see more cosplay. I always like cosplay. It's mm -hmm. always fun to dress up. I think one time we're just going to have to come in here like full-blown, like... I don't know what will be, but what will be something. And as we go ahead, we're going to go switch back over to our main cam. As we're just going to get in here. Again, loading screen. It's not too interesting. You guys don't want to see it. Now remember, signups are going to be open until we fill all eight teams. And I think we're at about six teams right now. So that means we have spots for maybe ten more people. So make sure you come over. Sign up at the desk to the left of the stage, and you'll be, you'll be able to get your chance to play on the stage just like the pros. And that is something we try and strive for, make you give you guys that real experience. Again, you don't have this too often. We only just got a North American final in Toronto to a sold-out crowd, so Canada representing, as always, we do. As we are slowly just getting into our match, loading screens are going to be popped up here. So make sure to cheer you guys on. We always love hearing you guys. Here we go. We're getting into the game. Let's go. Blue side Gromp, red side Um. All right, everyone's streaming out of their bases. Well, OK, some of them are streaming out of their bases. Streaming. They're, they're trying to stream out. As we go out here, so pretty standard starts from the looks of it. Again, it's going to be a Kennen top against the Jace and Velkos more against Morgana. So it's going to be interesting to see how that well how well that goes for him. Uh, I'm always interested to see how well these teams can play out. You never know. Like, there's no strategy. We've never seen these people before. I've actually talked to some of the members playing today, and. Um, it turns out that uh, some people uh, haven't, uh, some of the players playing today haven't played League very much. In fact, there's one player that has never played League ever, and this is his first time playing it, uh, on stage at least. He, he was able to get a few games a few hours before, uh, before right now, uh, but this is his first true game of League of Legends here. All right, so here you go, standard setup. Here we are. Things are coming out right now. Again, Amumu gonna probably, I, should be starting at the Gromp there. 
Uh, Siobhan are gonna be going over here and starting the drop, killing Team Blue's idol. Oh yeah. So yeah, you're right there, Morgana, definitely the mid laner there against the Belkaz. Uh, both have the potential to be long range there. Yeah, I, I feel like Belkaz wins the poke game overall though, in that situation. Again, he's gonna be launching Qs out, and it's not a fun lane. I, I, Belkaz is one of those champs, it's not fun to lane against. As we're just seeing right now, Mumu clearing out the last camp there. Should be getting that level two. Again, Morgana just having some troubles right now. Gotta be playing careful, able to get the CS. Yeah, they're playing it about even here for the CS. Um, man, both of them have really long range Qs. Yeah, it's gonna be long range Qs, and Morgana's that kind of uh, champ though that uh, you gotta be kind of careful when you're going against a Vel'Koz, actually. You, you, you can try and root him with a Q, but as you're casting your Tormented Soil, he knows exactly how you're gonna be. And it is a half second cast, it's not that fast, but again, Vel'Koz will have a, enough time to get some damage off in return. I think what's really important here is how well these two mid laners manage their mana because that's exactly what's going to, I think, decide who wins it because whoever is unable to master um, controlling their mana, uh, they're going to be caught flat-footed if something happens, like a gank. All right, so we do see Shavana. She did go for that extended clear, getting that level three just by doing her right side jungle again. Belkaz, nice trade up in top lane, getting able to poke back a bit. Again, getting that third proc off, that true damage from Belkaz in the rework is nuts, the amount he gets. Uh, and he just applies more through his ult. Uh, that's that's kind of a dangerous thing, because I've seen a lot of support Belkaz that can do 600 damage with a full ult. It's nuts. Uh. So again, nothing really happening right now. They're playing it pretty safe at the moment, which again, it's, it's fair. You're on stage, you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah, Ken doing a very good job pushing in his lane opponent there, but Shivana is really close by, so he's gonna have to be pretty careful. All right, so as we go into it right now, again, some CS advantages are starting to come out. Jace with a little bit, Belkos with a little bit. Again, it's just half away. Meanwhile, Mumu made a trip into mid lane. Again, Belkos easily walking away there. Yeah, it looks like uh, no damage was able to go on him, but Velkaz was pushed out of side of his lane, so that means experience loss, some CS possibly, uh, but he's, he's still alive, and that's what counts. As we're going right now, they were trying to get some damage. Nice Q coming out of Soraka. You know, that's a uh, first dragon, Infernal Dragon. Yeah, so hopefully we get to see some dragon fights. There was a couple in the last game. It wasn't too heated over dragon. Yeah. Um, but it's always fun when you get Infernal Drake right off the bat, because people usually try their best to try and cap that right off the bat. Again, Valkos getting some nice poke in that mid lane. Caitlyn going to take that Q from Soraka. Skeletron just going to play it safe. I'm interested to see how Skeletron levels. I'm always interested when Caitlyn players play. Because uh, there's so many ways you can do her. Uh, meanwhile, K uh, Kenan gonna go ahead and get some damage off through Chase. Again, doing some nice trades. Yeah, I know. Talking about Caitlyn there, I know that you like to go grab the uh, traps, level those traps up. I love doing traps. Uh, I think traps is actually one of the funnest ways to, to actually play her as playing trap. Uh, if you have good positioning and are, you know, you do well enough, uh, it, it, it does an insane amount of damage to be able to outplay. Meanwhile, uh -oh. Valkaz gonna get that third proc there. First blood gonna go over to him. Yeah, good move there. Uh, Morgana staying a little bit long, uh, a little bit low. Uh, definitely paid for it there, so Velkaz gonna take advantage of that. Push the lane in, and I think he's gonna back there, grab some, uh, grab some new items. All right, so as we see right now, Jace, a little lower on this side. Kennen is about, mm, he's gonna be about half a minion wave. He's gonna get a nice trade there. Isn't able to get the electrical charge off. Jace is gonna get away, but he's on low mana. He's gotta be careful right now. It's gonna real suck, because once Kennen gets six, you can bet he's gonna go ahead and dive. Shivana again, though, is up in that top lane, so he's able to, she's able to provide support if Jace needs it, but Jace is just gonna back off here. Uh, TP is up for him, so he could come back. I don't know if he's going to use it though. Yep, there we go. So yeah, TPing back into that lane. Once again, that's a double TP advantage now uh, for the blue team. Red team used their only teleport just to get back into lane. So if they want to make a big play, say, over at Infernal Dragon, blue team would have the advantage there. 
Yeah, so we do see the Frost claim uh, coming out actually for Morgana. So going for that kind of more gold generation build. Again, it doesn't do too well if they're trying to uh, use minions. Meanwhile, Jace going to try and go in here. Cannon trading back. He's going to back off there. Cannon taking the worst of that one. Very good move there by Jace. Taking advantage of uh, Cannon's need to be right on top of him. So if uh, Jace did get hit, uh, Cannon would be under tower pressure. So good move there. Good trade. All right, so right now, looking at the map, that, that's one thing I love Jace, actually. Jace is one of my more favorite champions to play. Mm -hmm. uh, he's always fun when you can get a nice combo off, um, but at the moment... So we're gonna get head back in there. Sorry about that, guys. During our little audio break there, Kenan able to pick up one kill. Um, at the moment, Amumu gonna go ahead and clear that out. Does get level six, so hopefully we're gonna see a lot more ganks coming out from them. Yeah, looks like Velkaz was roaming there as well, so he's gonna have to catch up there for Morgana. And at the moment, Kenan with that kill, able to get the Seeker's arm guard. And Jace has his tier, so both are stacking up right now. As we go here, again, Soraka trying to get some Qs down. Meanwhile, in this bot lane, it's been pretty quiet. Both ADCs went back, got their BF sword. Uh, we also see uh, Sivir as well, able to get some CS advantage. Meanwhile, Jace going aggressive, able to get the Thunderlord's proc. Kennen still going away. Again, flash for flash. Ke Jace not able to get the knockback properly. Still a very good trade by Jace there, being able to expend a lot there. Oh, yeah, Jace trying to get those pokes off. Again, you gotta be careful. He hasn't actually, it looks like he only has, I'm just saying, he's got four in it right now, so he's leveling properly. Yeah, if Kennen chooses to stay here, Jace has a lot of advantage, but here's the junglers. Uh, 1v1 coming out right now, exhaust used by Shavana. Shavana going deep onto Amumu. You gotta be careful if you're Kennen here. Does he have ult? He needs to blow that ult if he's gonna try and get it. Amumu! Flashes away, Jace with the chase right now. Uh, Nothing's gonna come out of it. So again, almost killing both junglers there. Yeah. Amumu able to walk away. A lot expended there by Red Team, just unable to get that kill, which is really unfortunate because now Morgana is able to push in. Um, she is behind in CS right now, but that just lets her catch up. All right, so Morgana. Gotta be careful with those Valkaz Ws. They do a lot of damage if you get hit by both procs. Again, trying to throw that Q out. Doesn't connect right now. We see Sivir gonna clear up that trap with the spell shield. Again, Turok has been hitting actually a lot of these Qs that I've, we've seen, so it's good on her. Again, you gotta be effective with those. Uh, Valkaz looking to maybe roam here. Meanwhile, top lane getting pushed up. So let's see if Valkaz can make something happen here in bot. Looks like they know that Velkaz is there, they're pinging him, and Velkaz is just gonna stick around. Looks like they want to engage on this one. Alright, so only able to get that one Q off for Velkaz, he's gonna head back home. Alright, Kenan getting some trades back in with that Q. Unable to really get the stun off, I haven't seen a whole lot of stuns coming out of him. Uh, again, you gotta really cycle. Meanwhile, we have Shivana trying the Drake. Amumu, though, over the wall. I don't know if Shivana knows he's there. It looks like his ward's been there for a couple more seconds. He's gonna try and go in. Maybe a little too early. There's Caitlyn. Shivana forced to have to alt out. Here comes the alt. Not gonna be able to finish her off. And again, uh. blue side stopping that there. If, if he waited just a little more, one more dragon attack, she probably would have died. Still, though, a uh, very good idea by Amumu there. Uh, going for the kill on the champion rather than trying to steal the dragon outright. Um, I guess, yeah, if he, had, if he did have a little more patience, uh, he might have been able to grab both objectives, actually. All right, so Morgana going to escape from Valkaz over there right now. 
Again, here it goes. Again, it's been a pretty quiet game, much more quieter than the first game. It's gonna take whatever's gonna take it. Whoever's gonna take that advantage, it's gonna really start to spiral. As Gromp did end up taking that Infernal Drake, but they are behind in gold, about 1K. So let's see right now. Cannon trying to get some trades back in. Oh, if he had the electrical charge, that would have finished Chase off. Yeah, Shivana being spotted over there in the top side. So. Again. Inside is able to push in. Morgana knowing that uh, there might be some pressure coming her way, so she's gonna back up. All right, as we see now, Sivir freezing the wave right now, trying to deny some CS or at least keep it from pushing. You don't again. It's hard to not push with Sivir when you have your W on all the time. Again, now up to 100 CS, so starting to get a bit of a CS advantage, starting to go through. That seems to be where a lot of the gold is riding right now on red side. Actually, for a lot of the game, uh, the bot lane was very, very even. They almost had equal CS the whole time, and it's just now that Sivir's pulling away with the uh, CS lead. They're going to back, and they're going to have a little bit more gold than Caitlyn at this point. All right, so Amumu went ahead, finished his Cinderhulk. So again, going to try and get some tankiness for his team. Again, when you do have the, the Tarek, it's going to be nice here. Here he goes. Cannon, though is going to get engaged on. Valkos with the ult is just going to be able to finish him off with the tip. There we go. First kill. Again, another kill for Valkos. Meanwhile, in this jungle fight, Amumu versus Shivana. Again, Amumu pretty tanky at the moment. Shivana doesn't have a whole lot of damage. Here in. comes Morgana. Going to land that stun and Tormented Soil going to finish it off. But meanwhile, up in top lane, red side going to try and push up. Um, trying to get that first tower gold as Belkos with that wave clear is going to try and push that in. And no one's responded yet, so it looks like they're going to get this TP is coming out. Yeah, meanwhile, Morgana is also able to push inside the lane in the mid. And so I don't, I'm not sure how much damage he's going to be able to put on. Amumu's going to try to help her out. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot. So no team's going to grab an objective on this run through. Uh, looks like red side though is gonna try and push first. They're, they're pushing in pretty deep. Luckily minions are just on the cusp of the radius for the turret there. Again, like Sivir able to get some trades back in. This is Sivir, you gotta be careful. Uh, Kaelin having some trouble there, is able to get the net. It's gonna flash, the heal comes out. Sivir though, trying, Bastion comes out. Not enough to save him, Kaelin with a little bit of a misplay there, not able to do a whole lot. Yeah, there's a lot of standing around there for that one, but uh, Sivir is able to make out a little bit better there with the help of Soraka. Uh, Tarek using his ult, uh, maybe a little late. Maybe it was a super delayed reaction. Maybe trying to save the turret. I could see that. He was committed. He's committed. So again, blue side's bot lane just having some difficulty here. They were doing kind of fine earlier on. Sivir now starting to try and push for some advantages. Again, does have that Berserker Greaves, so does have that boost in attack speed on her W with her ult passive, and they're going to get first blood turret there and get uh, that extra gold. That's unfortunate. Cannon was trying his best to try to shove down that top tower while Jace was gone for that whole period of time. Uh, unable to get that first one, so first blood tower is definitely going to go. Red team there. All right, so here we go. Amumu in that mid lane. He's going to try to get over to his jungle. Shavana showing in mid too. All right, so looking at the talisman there for uh, Soraka, that means there's two abilities for, uh, two, uh, yeah, two abilities that'll help red team uh, either run away or chase down their, t uh, their opponents. You don't see talisman a whole lot, actually. I no. think uh, in the preseason, they're looking at reworking it, I heard. Okay. They're, they're looking at it, trying to make it different, because, again, it's it's not as good as some items. Meanwhile, Shivana going to locate Amumu. Amumu with the Rift Herald juke. Uh, and that is a... Uh, I thought I just saw a proto belt. Uh, oh no, that's that's Shivana's, uh That's the skin. Yes. It looks really close to the proto belt. I was I, like, whoa, what's she doing? What's I was I was confused too. I was I was looking at it and I was like, oh, she did use an item, but it was um, it was a cutlet. So. Meanwhile, I'm gonna engage here. Gets the CC lock onto Jace. Jace gonna go down here. Gives the kill over to Cannon. Again, good job there. Again, Mumu with now two assists, getting his team ahead. Uh, Tarek right now, not a good spot right now. Nowhere to go. It's going to go down with the silence field. 
That's gonna be another kill on to Sivir. Two and two for both of them, both Belkos and Sivir with two kills. Yeah, as the plays advance here, uh, Sivir is slowly pulling ahead of her lane opponent, Caitlyn. Uh, that's definitely something that you don't want to see. Especially because Caitlyn's gonna be one of your main damage dealers on the blue side in those team fights that they want. Yeah, and that, that was one of the biggest things for them is they were gonna have a lot of trouble if they didn't do well with it. Oh, but here's a bot lane rush. Bot lane rush, Morgana caught out of nowhere. Silence field, exhaust going down. Flash Not up. a lot, flashes toward jungle. Uh, actually goes toward Amumu. Amumu with the grab, gets the ult down. Again, Soraka gonna get the wish active. Again, Sivir and them getting chased down. Here comes Velkos though, so Amumu doing well at saving his teammates. Yeah, very good, very good play by him. Uh, he was able to recognize that his teammate did need help, and luckily he was doing the scuttle crab in the top jungle. But here's some, here's some action in the dragon pit. Again, so this is second infernal Drake. Romp really wants to try and get this again. Really good wards by Amumu, keeping tabs on it. Might have been Tarek as well. And at the moment, they gotta be a little careful. Red side, Shivana is the only one in that pit, and she's tanking it. And Amumu can easily come over that wall. They can easily close. collapse. Here we go. Smite fight. Shivana is able to pick it up. But here we go. Shivana though, gonna get hunted down by Kaylin. Meanwhile, Jace coming in from behind. Here comes the Targul. It went, didn't do a whole lot. Zimmer now on the back line. Gonna get knocked up by Velkos. Velkos looking to clean up. Double kill coming out. And a kill toward Velkos. Good job by Redside to respawn there. Yeah, good, good focusing on the priority targets for the red team. It looked like blue team was a little bit scattered in that team fight there. Uh, focusing on different champions at different times. They were being picked off slowly, and that's where red team was able to uh, basically catch up here. All right. And so it looks like a lot of pressure is going to be happening mid lane. They're going to grab that tower as well. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. All right. So we take a look now at the map. We do have some items getting taken out. The Trinity Force Morgana. That's a new one. Cannon might be in a bad place here. The tower's about to go down. We go Cannon to the going in. Gets the flash out of Valkaz. And Cannon is actually in a good spot right now. Two and one. Has those Sorcerer Boots. Able to get some Magic Pen into his build. Uh, with the Zonias, he's going to be able to survive what pretty much whatever they throw at him. The rest of his teammates are moving around the map, seeing what advantages they can get. Looks like they can get the bottom side duo there. Zonia's coming out though from Cannon. Cannon though gonna ah. go down there, unable to dodge the W. There's actually a trade of kills there. Yeah, Rift Herald is gonna return back to the void. So again, 1-1 one, one, the trade there. 5-8 the score here at 20 minutes. All right, three men pushing down that bottom lane. They know that Shivana's somewhere around there, but Shivana's gonna actually hook around and grab that red buff. Morgana might want to be a little careful, though. And again, red side, mainly playing through their mid lane as well as their ADC, trying to get down towers here. And they're doing a good job here. Mainly, if Caitlyn gets behind, as long as you keep pressuring her, not allowing her to farm, she's in a really tough spot. Um, that, that's the one thing that sucks about playing Caitlyn is you have to wait a really long time. So you're looking at a really late game fight. But again, Sivir. Morgana, watch out! Here comes the Shivana combo. Big amount of damage coming out there. Easy pickup. Shivana doing a good job there. Again, does have that Razorback, is it now called? I They keep changing that oh, item yeah. on me. I haven't used it in a while. The old Devourer item, because it was too strong. It's always too strong. Meanwhile, we have the Targ ult coming out right now. No one there to support, so just trying to play safe. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Jay's going to farm those creeps out. Is trying to stack up that Miramana. Again, Shivana going to go ahead and take her red buff. So again, doing good jungle clears right now and keeping it up. Meanwhile, here comes Amumu from the side. Kaylin able to get the tilt over Peacekeeper. Here comes the ult. Heal comes out as well. 
Here comes the flash. Hook lands, and Amumu gonna clean up the kill. He displayed very good patience there by holding on to his Q because he knows that uh, Sivir is gonna pull up his, her spell shield. So he waits for her to do it, waits for it to time out, grabs the kill. All right, so Cannon trying to do the best to save his tower. It is gonna go down though, so Blue Turret goes over. Shivana's coming too. Yeah, Shivana. She doesn't have ult. Oh, she just got the Fury for it. Uh, her teammates just didn't follow up there, but it's because they're dealing with the minions. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Morgana is going to try and push that up with a Mumu. Mumu going to accidentally take a couple turret shots. Actually, they're going to move on over. It looks like they're going to try and support the bot lane or even get that blue buff. Yeah, it looks more like the blue buff here at this point. Uh, the red team bottom lane hasn't shown up yet, so they don't need to actually be there. But Morgana is going to show up. Here's a TP. This might be a fight. And here we go. TP comes out. Jace is going to get onto that tower, gets the... Q out, but it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. Here we go. Sivir is there too. She needs to pop that on the hunt. Here it goes. Right now. Oh, she doesn't have it yet. That was the talisman. Here we go. Speed team fight coming in. Big amount of damage coming out from Kennen with the cleanup. Good job by him. Turns that around on the dime. Able to trade back two for three. Looks like they're also going to be able to grab this objective here as well. Yes, they do. And red team's going to back up. It looks like they can keep pushing here. All right, so blue side able to get a nice pickup here. I think what Shivana wants to do is push that mid lane down. That's one way to take uh, take members away from a highly contested zone is to focus something else so that they're forced to react. All right, so here we go. Blue side is going to recall there. Yeah, all went well. Blue team had to re uh, recall anyway, so. Uh, Siobhan's going to use this opportunity to head over to top lane, it looks like. Grab that farm there. All right, and we do have Drake is coming up here in about 15 seconds. So again, it's kind of it's interesting to see. Um has kind of really turned it on a dime. They did get a little too cocky there in the bot lane and ended up dying to Kennen. And Kennen now, really big, has that Rylize. It's a lot of damage and a lot of utility in the kit. Again, Sivir going to eat that spell shield. Again, Jace able to get a poke out there. Yeah, pretty strong, pretty strong there from Jace. Water Drake is up, so it's gonna be interesting to see exactly how these teams play it out. Again, one for one each on the Infernal. Again, poke is coming out there. Shavana in the mid lane, and she gets caught out here. Amumu gets the Q, and it's gonna force the ult. This would be a good time to try and get that dragon going. You gotta be careful though against Velkaz in that corridor. Again, Kenny getting some joke. Here we go. Amumu with that. It's going to try and ult. Gets a nice ult off, but Velkaz uh, able to get his ult off. Able to turn that around. Sibur picks up the kill on Amumu. And that's kind of the awkward situation where if you don't ult at the right time and don't catch everyone, it can be really bad for your team. Yeah, having even just Velkaz up there, he stops Blue Team Cold with that ultimate. They're forced to back up. They're so low and it looks like they're going to be get, they're going to be able to get this dragon here. All right, Amumu, no sm smite. Smite was a little miss there. Able to pick it up though with Velkaz. All right, so that was uh, that was a dragon that blue team would have wanted to have because there's so much poke from red team, so it's good of them to take that away, uh, reduce the amount of health uh, regenerated by the blue team from the poke. So uh, red team's in a good spot here. They're gonna continue to push. All right, as we go, red side gonna try and get that inner in, not inner in, uh, inner mid tower there. And Kennen, though, from the side, he is a dangerous threat. And once he gets that proto belt into his belt, he's going to be just nuts. Again, the prototype uh, belt with with Kennen is just a nasty combo. You get a, so much damage off with it. I was wondering if uh, Red Team was going to go for Baron because it lo uh, looked like a lot of the other lanes were pushing into the enemy towers. If they had stayed in the mid lane, uh, they could have either forced uh, the enemy team to go into the other lanes to stop it and grab that mid tower. Otherwise, um, they could have just stayed there and uh, let the minions push in. Uh, they do neither, and uh, things are just going to reset. All right, as we go ahead and reset here. Uh, we're looking at very big gold leads, uh, or CS differences at least, from the mid lane here. Velkaz doing a very good job uh, over Morgana, and uh, yeah, he's doing a very good job managing uh, his waves and uh, helping out his team with getting those kills. 
All right, as we do see Kaylin as well, has kind of caught back up in farm, is trying to work now onto that Runans most likely. Uh, it's kind of rare you see her go static or uh, rapid fire right off the bat. As red side grouped up here in the mid, they want to fight, they want to take towers. Blue side, they gotta be a little careful here. They do have that Morgana ult. Here comes the Mumu, able to get the landed Q. But again, that true damage misses the flash, has to ult out. Here comes Kennen. Kennen with a bunch of damage going down, able to pick up the kill with the help of Kaylin. Not able to capitalize any more on it. Blue side, nice silence field coming out for Soraka there. And Ke again, Kennen looking to do what he can to try and carry his team. Yeah, even with that uh, that misplayed flash there by Amumu, he's able to do his job and stun the enemy long enough for Kennen to burst them, burst the enemy team down. Uh, very good play by both, uh, but it was a one for one. Yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see exactly if Tarek is gonna start being able to put his Bastion onto like a Mumu or even Kennen. Again, if you have that on yourself and then your front line, and just go ahead and use your ultimate. Again, they should be starting to win a lot of these fights because that's kind of the big thing we've been missing. I haven't seen a lot of Terra Cults coming out. There was early on, uh, but nothing really falling through. Yeah, definitely something you want to place on the one teammate that's going to die. Uh, Tara can definitely help keep his teammates alive so that they're able to continue the fight, uh, especially against such a poke-heavy team. You want to continue to be able to like push through, push through into the enemy team so that you can uh, disorient them and get a, take away from their poke. Uh, Jace now still working on stacking that Mira mana at the moment. Uh, again, 30 minutes here, looking at it a little late, and he got it pretty early on, actually. He did get it pretty early. Uh, so he needs to be able to start cycling through those uh, spells a little bit more while walking to lane. You're able to stack that pretty fast. Yeah, Soraka picking up the locket there, so he's able to provide his team with uh, even more shields. He's actually doing a very good job, 018, just doing a very good job as a support. Yeah, also has that side stone and getting those wards down into her jungle, making sure to try and catch out blue side if they try and play anything fishy over there. Uh, they do get pings out onto a Mumu though. Red side though, they gotta be careful now. The last couple of fights haven't really been going in their favor and really they should have been losing a lot more members. Yeah, here's a place where they might be forced to fight if they want to defend this turret. Uh, but Jace is there pushing. He does have teleport, so he's able to rejoin his team. All right, here we go. Blue side starting to try and siege here. They're going to have to do something. Again, Jace now in that ball lane. He can honestly keep pushing it out. They're only just now reacting to it, so he's going to get away. He did notice that Amumu disappeared heading down towards the bot lane, so that's why he did go away. Uh, wards just aren't deep enough, so he's just uh, taking the safe path there. I really like the Banshee's feel actually on Sivir this early. Uh, she, she shouldn't be getting stunned pretty much at this point. Uh, unless Kennen gets right on top of her uh, and pops the ultimate right away, uh, she should be doing it pretty fine. Again, you have Morgana Q that can stun you up. You also have the Tarek uh, stuns as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys, because it's, it's pretty much one big team fight from blowing this game out the window right now. Red side is doing their best to try and finish it off. Infernal is up. Whoever takes this is going to have two Infernals, and that's a bunch of extra damage. Yeah, the dance around the Dragon Pit is happening at the one minute mark. They're just trying to find some hole for them to uh, take advantage of. Each team just moving around, trying to grab that positioning. 30 seconds about for the next dragon, and Jason's gonna go head up for top lane because he doesn't want to be caught uh, with a turret being pressured. All right, so here we go. Blue side trying to make their way through that corridor. You gotta be careful against Velkaz right there. Again, Kaylin, she can get her trap set up, and she could actually lock down that corridor Velkaz is in right now. And basically section off the map, but here we go. Sivir in that mid lane is starting to push that tower, and really, they're just trying to plant play around it and Sivir's gonna get that turret. They're still not reacting. Sivir's able to keep pushing here. She's got minions. Okay, so now her teammate is backed off and blue team is gonna have to struggle deciding uh, whether they want the dragon or Sivir and they're gonna go for dragon. Gonna get the dragon. I think it's a fair fair idea actually. Uh, that turret was pretty low itself. But here comes Shivana. Shivana from the side looking to get the seal. She has two levels on him. All right. Not soon enough. She's gonna have to alt over the wall. Gets away there. But the pressure continues here. Top lane's going to be pushed in, uh, unless Blue Team can back uh, just in time here. They're looking to try to meet them at the tower, but Sivir is a very fast pusher. 
Yeah, and that's one thing about Timber. With Jace, actually, you can get a lot of damage. They are going to back off because of the TP coming from Kennen. Again, kind of a smart idea. I think, honestly, Kevin uh, Kennen could actually 2v1 them at this point. He's got enough damage into his kit. Uh, I do see a Kindle Gem coming out for him. I'm trying to remember. I think that's actually the Protobelt itself, actually. Which would be very useful for Yeah, Kevin. yeah. Yeah, especially if he doesn't have that flash up. And even if he does have that flash, flashing in with Proto Belt at point blank range is just disgusting right. on him. He's also got Zanyas. His things are looking very good for this cannon. All right, so here we go. 31 minutes on the mark. The upside being bought there by Sivir, so if he's able to do even more damage. See, the, the one thing I'm liking about right side is they're, they're playing passively, but they're not really initiating, especially when you have that Sivir as well as that Talisman, and also Jace at this point. You can really go in on for these kills, um, and they haven't been really pushing their advantage. Uh, again, uh, Gromp, though, does have the double Infernal Drake, so they are starting to get a bit of that damage they're missing back. Again, I, roughly, here we go, there's a catch, though, onto Morgana. Morgana forced the flash. Again, there's that acceleration gate. Q misses, but they can chase her down. Here comes a Moomoo from the side. What can they do? Here's Kaylin from the side. Here comes Kennen. Kennen not able to catch everyone in his ult, and he's getting taken down. Zonia comes out. A Moomoo still playing Disruptor right now. He's gonna get taken down by the Valgos Q. Good job for Red Team to disengage that enough. That was a really long fight and no one died for the longest time. Ah uh, yeah, once again, very good disengage by the Red Team, even ha after having been caught. That, that was a really good ult though by Amumu. Yeah, great ult by Amumu. It was just a little too early for Kennen. Kennen wasn't there yet. As Red Side, they're gonna go for this Baron and there's no Amumu to steal. This is a smart call. There's no smite. Blue team does see all of this happening though. Oh, that knockup though from Baron. That's doing a lot. They're taking this really slow. They gotta be careful here. Kennen does not have ultimate up. They're trying to poke her down. And red side, they're split. Blue has done their job to disrupt the Baron. And Shabana, she can't do this at the moment. That's and it has reset. Good. They're gonna try. Oh, it hasn't reset yet. Yeah, they're still about 3,000 health. They're gonna pick it up. So that's the point where you need that cannon ult so badly. I really think that blue team could have been able to just root force their way in there, force force uh, red team either between them or the Baron. And oh. you, you have that Terracult. You have a lot of ability to try and go in for those dives, try and take those risky fights. Yeah, Especially when you have Baron on your side. Baron does an insane amount of damage. It also lowers your MR, it lowers your armor, so you can do a lot with it. Uh, it's pretty much having two members actually fighting for your team if it's aggro to the right person. Uh, actually, like, even Elder Drake, we saw that uh, in, I, I believe that was the uh, Team Liquid uh, series back in NA, uh, where it, they, they were so far ahead, but Elder Drake was right on them and just destroyed them. Alright, so preparations made around these other uh, objectives. You're right, though. The, uh not a lot of uh, pressing the advantage that uh, Red Team has here. Uh, things are slow going for them. Not a lot of towers are dead, and we're hitting the 35 minute mark. Again, Red Team can catch up. Unfortunately, Tarek and I guess Soraka both a little under level. Nice spell shields coming out from Sivir. Sivir gonna have to back off though. Doesn't know where the rest of the blue side is. Could collapse easily. Morgana's been able to hit a couple Qs now, and I gotta love this build from Morgana. I have not looked at her build in a long time, but I'm now seeing a death stance. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this is like the hybrid tank AD cross claim Morgana. Which is, uh, you know what, there, there's so much uh, AP damage coming from Kennen that they ha that uh, Red Team has to dissipate with their <laughs> items. That maybe going AD is a good idea. Um, I don't, I'm not sure, we'll see if that pans out. We'll see how it goes, Amumu looking over the wall, not gonna find anyone there. It does see the Jace though. The wards from blue side are actually really well done here. Able to, you know, ward up their jungle, see where red is moving around. Again, Amumu gonna miss that Q there. And it's Caitlyn in the ball lane. Honestly, blue side can collapse really hard right now. There isn't a whole lot left on that Baron buff, about a minute. Yeah, but there's a ward in the jungle there that catches, uh... Actually, no, yeah, the catch is blue team going into the jungle, so red team's able to just back on out. But this is the problem with red team right now. They're trying to focus all these lanes when they can really just brute force a lane uh, with that Baron buff. Again, Kaylin is going to get caught out there, able to get the net down. And she's starting to hurt with those traps and nets.
right. So now as we see here, again, red side doing that split push right now. Again, if Shivana gets near that tower, it will go down quick. There is a zone. Oh, it just extended. It actually was there for the longest time. All right, so again, blue side trying to make something happen here. Again, TP coming in from Cannon. Cannon, he's not gonna do a whole lot. He's just there to defend. You know what, blue team is doing a very good job of stopping uh, red side from pushing into their top lane. They're, again, they're Amumu gonna get a catch here on Shivana. Shivana forced to use the exhaust. I don't think she had to, but it's safe uh, on the safer side there. There's another z -Rock coming down there, uh, defending that top lane tower. So blue team is actually able to force uh, fights in other different lanes. And uh, with Elder Dragon up, it looks like they can... They, they have the room. They can set up the wards and they can set up the Caitlyn traps. Because they do have two Infernals. You double that bon uh, 1.5, that bonus. Oh, it's going to no. do a whole lot if you're blue side. This is actually riddle really critical if they can pick this up. They actually had a very good position there where Red Team didn't know where they were. Here's, uh, looks like they're going to just poke a little bit. Red Team's getting a little better position for that. I, I honestly think a Flash comes out from Velkos. I don't think you should start the... Dr it's whoever starts the Drake is going to lose this. Kennen actually smart there. Aggro's Elder and is going to send it after Red Team. Again, you can always use that. Shiraka getting almost caught out. Forced the Flash there. Amumu not able to connect onto the Q, and it's uh -oh. just a dance right now. Actually, Sivir's looking at that, taking advantage of it. She pushed that bot lane all the way in. She did. She is recalling, though. This isn't a good idea. Here, they can start this Elder Drake. Sivir is going to stay. It depends on how Blue Side fights this. Morgana took a lot of damage there, and it's pretty much Sivir versus them. Sivir is going to recall here. And look at Kennen. He's fight. able to zone out that entire team by himself. He's going to go in and flash, gets the ultimate down able to stall them enough again blue is still on this cannon is gonna go down because of it elder drake here we go they get the elder drake that infernal buff it doesn't help them because cannon it was their main damage dealer they need to back off here right now again caitlin lots of damage coming down onto her but Sivir pushing the base she didn't back she's starting to get that in him Oh, Morgana gonna go down there, and blue side kind of threw a little here. Again, Saber was able to get that inhibitor, and she's going to try to get out of. Actually, she's going in for a fl more flights. Again, she is in an awkward place right now, but with the ricochet, she can do a lot of damage. But Caitlyn can do more. Uh -oh. oh, she has the banshees. Oh, she goes down to the burn. That was weird. That was a weird. All right, so blue team just has to defend here because top lane turret is going to push. Yeah, oh, here comes the ult from Amumu. Amumu getting that damage. That burn hurts a lot. Tavana just going to get out of there. She goes down to the burn. Terragult is just a little too late. This is going back and forth. Again, blue side, they're trying their hearts out, but they're losing so much of their base for, because of these calls. Here comes Jace. Jace going to go TP up to top lane yeah, and defend. Close. Here comes Cannon, not able to get the stun off. Very close. So with that, Gromp able to pick up Elder Drake, able to kind of stall out the game a little. Uh, and actually, Cannon going to try his best to try and hunt people down. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what they can do here. Um, I believe the Elder Drake is about halfway done. So it depends on how well they're going to use this to their advantage. Hopefully they can use it a lot better than Red Team did with their Baron. Um, yeah, this is a game where we want to see people force their, for, uh, force their advantages here. And right now, it's finally on blue side, so let's see what they can do with it. 40 minutes on the clock. This barn burner going for a very long time here. About 10 seconds left for the Baron, so that's going to be uh, something up for grabs. There's no wards in position there, so no team looks like they're uh, trying to go for it at this point. All right, and at the moment, we also do see the Eye of the Watchers. So again, there's a lot of vision coming out for blue side. Um, I would have preferred going Spooky Ghost over that, though, personally. It gives you a little bit more utility to your team. Um, really, right now, they're just kind of missing the damage for Morgana. She, if she go, went a little bit AP at the moment, she'd be able to just do enough that her team could get ahead. Meanwhile, Kennet going aggressive right now, able to stun up Jace. Jace, though, going to pop that off right now, able to put back a Mumu. It was all a plan. All a plan. Again, that's Sivir right now. She does. She's looking to finish her last item. Again, here's Shivana, though. Gets caught out. Not a whole lot of damage. That's your issue. 
does alt there, and they're not in a good spot right now. Morgana not able to get the black shield off. She's gonna go down to the ultimate. Tarek gonna get collapsed on. Red side looking to make a push. They can really put in the hammer here to try and make this the game end. Yeah, Kaylin's forced to deal with the super minions and the bot lane, so she's unable to help there. Red team in very good position if they want to take uh, a take, take a look at the Baron. Amumu, uh, trying to be sneaky right now, is going to get seen out by Sivir. Sivir able to hunt him down. Again, does have that turret still alive there. Caitlyn coming up to support. So again, a 3-2 push coming out right now, and they should be able to take this with ease. Yeah, that turret's going down. It's going to be a 10k gold lead, and here's another little engage. Again, Soraka tried to flash in, tried to take the Q for Amumu. And really right now, Proto Bell used to clear the wave and Kennen at the moment, he doesn't have a way of getting in. He needs that Proto Bell to go in and actually Caitlyn doing a lot of damage. Soraka though, able to heal her up. We're actually seeing a lot of good CS yields here, but uh, yeah, red team super minions are rushing into the base, so they have an opportunity here to push into this mid. But here they back off again. They need to really try and make something happen mid. And again, they had enough time to close that. Here comes Amumu. Amumu with a ginormous ult. A lot of damage coming up for Caitlyn, but they can't finish it off. Here we go. Turn around. Here we go. Kennen able to get the Zonias off. He needs to get in there. He gets a lot of damage down, but it's not enough. Morgana able to pick up a kill. There's another kill going over to Caitlyn. Blue side trying their best. Tarek ult was just a little too late again. He's got to use that earlier when Kennen's getting collapsed on. And that was almost perfect for blue side. You know what? Making a uh, Mumu invulnerable while he's trying to rush into the enemy team. That's a very good move. And that's a good fight that's oh, There we go. They're going in on Sivir. Mumu gets popped up. He Watch might it. go down here. Able to get away. Kalen, though, able to pick it up. A lot of damage going down. Not able to turn around. Shutdown goes over to Jace. And again, right. it's a 12k gold advantage, but blue side, they've been trying so hard. Their team fight is so good when it gets pulled off. Williams on the bot lane, they're trying to go get those turrets. Yeah, right now, their they're, they're base is just getting hammered upon by super minions. Again, Amumu able to get back over there. Okay, so those minions definitely did save Red Team there. They had a few men down, so it would have been a lopsided fight for them if they decided to In all them. honesty, if they just backed off there and let that wave push in, they could have easily went for Baron. Because mm -hmm. at that point, you have to choose between another inhibitor or even your Nexus Towers and, and Baron. And at this point, 43 minutes into a game, one team fight should win this. Yeah, definitely. All those death timers are so long, it could definitely affect anything. Even one death could spell the difference between a victory or a loss, especially if the fight's going to be around Baron here. Uh, wards are going down, so it looks like some teams are going to, these teams are going to be looking at Baron. Again, Baron is up. It's on the table right now. Again, Jace at this point is full build it right now. Valkons gets it. Hooked there by Amumu Mumu, able to juke around the knockup, able to get some damage. Jace not in a good spot either. Actually, Tarek's in a not so good spot. Here comes Cannon. Here comes. Oh, a misplay there by Cannon, able to hit those Zonias right off bat. Here comes Cannon. Cannon trying to get some damage off, but it's not enough. He used Zonias already. Amumu used his alt. And again, they're running away right now. What can they do? Amumu getting hit on. And wow. there we go. Jace, though, gets blown up by Kate with those traps. Those are the traps we were talking about at the beginning of this game. They do so much once you get hit by them. It looks like the chase is now over. Red team, more members alive. They're rocking around Baron. Um, yeah, but that bot side inhibitor has respawned, so they're unable to uh, take advantage of that one, and it's going to push into them. All right, Morgana with that tormented soil. Again, backing off right now. Again, it's a 3v5 at this point. As red side, you can really do a lot of damage. Here comes Sivir from the side. Again, it's gonna get hit by those crits, and you gotta be careful if you're Sivir. You're gonna go down here. Caitlyn, she does a lot more against you in a 1v1. If she's able to get that trap down, if she's able to get that neck, she will always kill you. She shouldn't be able to not kill you at that point. It reminds me of one of those early level that early level three kill there uh, 40 minutes ago at the beginning of the game, where Sivir and Caitlyn both just stood there, and this time uh, Caitlyn stood victorious after uh, all the auto attacks. Yeah, once you get those headshot procs on top of a bloodthirster, it, it heals you actually a lot, especially if you're able to get into crit as well. She has about 50% crit chance. 
Uh, I do see the armor being built. She might be going for a GA. Um, though at this point, if you get caught here and you're dead, you're 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 dead, dead. Like it's it's gonna be hard to save you from that. She does have good teammates for it though. If she does die first, and she is the yeah, if she is the first one dead, uh, then the enemy team that is on top of Caitlyn at that point is very susceptible to an Amumu ult uh, cannon engaged. All right, so Morgana in this bot lane puts down Torrin Sandal. But guess what? Shavana does a whole lot there. Weird click there. Morgana probably gonna go down here. And that's the power of Shivana once she gets going. At this late game, Shivana in a 1v1 she will really start to hurt. Yeah, but here comes Blue Side. Jace able, though, to zone them off with the empowered Q. Oh, flashing the masteries there. Yeah, so we did see Protobout used again by Kennen. Again, it is on a pretty short cooldown. I think it's about 30 to 40 seconds at the moment. Looks like a Z route was just used, but I can't find it. So it looks like it might have been killed right away. All right, and blue side trying to make something happen. Elder Drake, though, in one minute. Again, this would be the second Elder Drake. And we saw it with Gromp that they were able to take it, but they lost so much. Uh -huh. And it, with two exposed inhibs, if Sivir goes for those, they're, they're gone. Yeah. And you have to make a really tough choice of you're going to have to turtle again for the amount of time that you have the Dragon Buff. Yeah, I believe team is going to have to play it a little smart here. Uh, red team's a little spread out, so if blue team wants to brute force in one of these lanes, they're going to be able to grab something. But they're going to lose so much for it if they commit, because see this top lane, Sivir up in top, you have Shivana in the bottom, you uh -oh. have three lanes pushing against you, and Sivir and them, they tear this down so fast. Okay. Again, they lost about half the turret health by just one wave, and here goes in the uh -oh. mid lane now. And look at the bot lane as well, Shivana's pushing. Again, red side just trying to spread apart blue, and blue is just not having any of it. Again, alt comes out from Tarek, but some miscommunication there, it might cost them. Again, 15 seconds on that Elder Drake. Caitlyn has so much pressure, though. Even her by herself is enough to help deter the top lane push. And Kennen's uh, coming. Kennen wants to make something happen. Able to proc that with his Proto Belt. Good job by him. Wish comes out. Sivir goes down. Zonias gets popped. And here we go. Caitlyn trying to make something happen. Meanwhile, in bot lane, though, Shavada able to at least pressure that enough. Again, against a Mumu, it's kind of a 1v1. Here comes Tormented Soil, and Shivana slowly getting taken down here. Tark is there. Nice, nice job oh. by a Mumu. Here comes the stun lock, though, with the Amumu ult. They're trying their damage to try and get this. Another Q should come out, and that should be the end. Oh, oh who's going to get it? The stun needs to come out. There's the smite. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Kennen against Jace. Jace gets taken out. Kalen. Forced oh, to no. flash from that. Able to keep the GA though. They're so low. They're on it. Red team's unable to capitalize on any of these. They're unable to get any of the turret. Uh, yeah, the top lane turret or any of the inhibitors. So very good defense there by Blue. All right, the 50 minute barn burner here. Elder Dragon is now live. The pings are made. Someone's got to have it. Again, we do see a big wave forming in that bot lane for blue side. So it's going to push back up and give them a little bit of a break. They could actually maybe even go for a Baron call at this point. And they're that anti-pushing anti power would be really good. They're, they're oh starting no. to make their way. Red side, they have no one here to try and defend it. They don't have wards. They have Jace no idea is going to try and get up there and see if he can help. But at the moment, they're able to. There comes the blue trinket, but they can tear down this Baron at a decent pace. Yeah, once Caitlyn gets there, that's where all the damage is going to come from. Here she is. Uh, here comes Velkos. Velkos able to get a lot of damage off, but they're actually got a lot of resistances. Let's see, how is this going to go? Who's going to get it? Smite goes down. Amumu able to pick it up, and Blue Side able to pick up Baron. That's definitely going to take away the pressure away from, uh, Bar from uh, Elder Dragon, because if Blue Team uses this Baron to push effectively, they can push Red Team off. Uh, make force them to defend their turrets, and then that's when Blue Team can go grab that Elder Dragon. Again, you also have that Thorn Mail on a Moomoo now, so it actually really hurts if you try and 1v1 him, or at least put Sivir against him. Yeah, Sivir's effectiveness is slowly going down, while Kaylin's effectiveness is making her such a threat. Yeah, that's the thing. If, if you get enough armor against the Sivir... Here's the problem with Sivir's build. She has no armor pen. She doesn't have a Last Whisper item, and that's really taking away from what she can do. When you get that Ricochet going with the crits and everything, you do so much damage, mm -hmm. but you need some armor pin in that build to make it work. Ken is looking to go around and try to flank. You have a little bit of armor build on the Hex Trigger. I forgot that got changed, but it's mm -hmm. slight. It's not enough to really make it worth. Alright, so red team's being pushed off. I'd really like to see blue team take advantage of this Baron buff. There, it blue side. 
Gromp trying to make it happen. They need a ward over that wall to really see what's going on. Jace, though, they have started that Elder Drake, and they got to be committed. Here comes Sivir with the ult. Here comes Red Team. Amumu in the back line. A cannon able to get the ultimate off. Big amount of damage. He gets taken out. Tower Gulf's coming down just now, and Blue Side is cleaning up. Seven's gonna have to run away. Get that spell shield down. Here we go. Amumu able to get a grab. And for that, four for one for Blue Side. All right, we got a lot to work with here with Blue. They, they still have the Baron buff, and uh, top lane has a huge wave. Mid lane they can push through, and bottom lane, they have so much. And here goes Elder Dragon. Elder Drake as well. You have both buffs. You really have to make something happen. Uh, and unfortunately, if Morgana was a little bit more healthier, she could have TP'd up top and probably taken that turret. But again, they're gonna try and make something happen here. They have so much time. They should really focus on the mid lane. They actually have a wave. Again, they're kind of miss. The communication is mixed right now. They don't know what to do. Have to make make a decision. They're sticking with bot lane here. Taylor's strong enough to push on her own in the mid lane. I think they're gonna be able to grab grab both these turrets. All right. Maybe so go in for an in hit. I think they should go for an in hit. They really need to put some pressure back onto these. Again, the pings are going up, but there's no wards for red side right now. Again, if they keep this pressure up, they could probably get two yep. towers they here. There's a lot to. of damage from these minions. Yep, Soraka just coming up. Velka just coming up for red team. All right, so they're going to get at least one turret for their trouble. Probably a second yeah, one Kaylin in mid lane. Kaylin, she's going to stick with it. She's trying to get that in hit. Again, here we go. Velka is trying to make something happen. Uh -oh. Kaylin. She does have the GA, but the minions are still alive and they're still damaging them in him. Oh no, okay, so the rest of her team, rest oh, of Caitlyn's team has just backed off, so everyone was free to go after that Caitlyn. So Caitlyn is now dead for the next more than a minute. So red team has a lot to work with here because a lot of the main damage from blue team is now gone. All right, so the map is kind of reset. The gold is now getting more even. At this point, it doesn't matter. A 5k gold lead is might as well be a 100 gold lead at this point. It's all about how well the team fights come out. Without Caitlyn, it's going to be hard. Shavana Here comes Shavana. Shavana trying to make something happen, but she's a little overextended. Stun does not hit with Tarek there. Yeah, red team was just not coordinated there, so they're forced to back up here. Caitlyn, 30 seconds left, so the red team still has 30 second window to try to make something happen. All right, here we go. 53 minutes on the clock right now. This was the problem with Red Side. They had the lead early. They just did not play aggressive enough, and they've let Blue Side get back into this game. If you look at this, though, uh, the Z-Rob portal in the bot lane, Amumu and Morgana are doing a very good job manipulating waves here, keeping themselves alive, making the minions push for them so that even if they do make some mistakes, they're able to stay with it. It's a 53-minute game. Uh, at this point, anything can happen. There's no neutral objectives to take. That's the problem. Red side, they have the vision. They could try and make a pick, and honestly, they should at this point. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's whoever gets picked at this point. Mm -hmm. 54 minutes, It's this is pretty much as late game as you get right now. Okay, so Soraka's gonna pick up that Mikhail's there, so hopefully it'll help her team out, especially if uh, one of her teammates gets caught by an important CC. Again, that's probably gonna be on Sivir. Sivir will have three different times in which she can negate CC, so she really has to make it work. now coming in that mid lane cannon in the bot against Shivana. that Amumu pressure that Morgana pressure for the CC has two banshees uh, that he fails on the red team all right let's see how well this goes Shivana now pushing in this lane again it's gonna be whoever gets the better team fight one thing I'm really concerned about is I don't see any grievous wounds items coming out for blue side again you can really just stop the amount of heal coming in from Soraka at this point yeah, Shivana's gonna heal so much. Again, she has that war monk as well. She has an insane amount of life regen. If you don't kill her, she will just regen it all back up in a couple seconds. Here comes Kennen. Kennen looking to be aggressive right now. They need to. 56 minutes on the clock. Uh -oh. Valkos gets called out. Here's a good Terracol. They take him down, and Kennen now in the bot lane. Can they support him? Here comes Kaylin. Kaylin trying to get some damage off. It might not be enough. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there's a fight going down. Red side trying their best. Nice trap comes out. Kaylin with the outplay. 
Now, coming over. Let's see, Caitlyn flashing the wall. She wants Sivir. Sivir might be in trouble here right now. S nice. Oh, here we go. Who's gonna get it? Heel comes out. Here's the pilt over. Heel comes out for Soraka and able to keep her alive. Yeah, Caitlyn has no ultimate there, so she's not able to continue that chase. If she did, she would have been dead because Jace is there to help. Blue side, they're gonna be able to push. Look at that top wave. <laughs> that Z Rod's helping that. That's a big top wave. Yeah. Um, Baron up in 20 seconds at the moment. We might see our third Baron of the game. Possibly even a third Elder Drake at this point. And with such long uh, respawn times for that jungler on the red team, Shivana, she's not going to be able to stop this if if uh, Caitlyn's on the case. Honestly, just just all four of you go in and try for a fight. You do have the advantage right now. Here comes Tarek. Tarek trying to get a stun out, does not land. Here comes Caitlyn. Caitlyn, a lot of damage. Zipper trying to make something happen. A lot of damage coming out. Caitlyn is not in a good spot right now, able to escape. Here we go. Now let's see how this is gonna work out right now. Blue side trying their hardest right now. Baron is alive. So much pressure in the top lane there. They're TPing to it. They're taking advantage of it. Blue is trying their hardest right now to try and end this game, trying to get Great more turrets, trying to get more pressure onto the map. But the defensive red team is here. They're gonna try and stop them back. They're gonna try to fight Here we right go. Here. There is on the hunt is still available, as well as the acceleration gate if they want to fight. Oh, big amount of damage comes down from Belkaz. Morgana gets chunked out. Blue team also, wants to get out of there. All right, and blue team going to have to back. They have to be careful. But if you back right now, you leave the Baron so open. Right now, there's a TP down in the bot side. Jace trying to sneak those in him, most likely. Looks like it. Again, he does get spotted out by awards. So they do know he's there, and he's trying to come over right now. Uh -oh. What can they do? What are they going to be able to try and do against this? There is some T TPs back up. Jace does get chunked out right now. He's got to be careful. Notices that ward that spotted him earlier, so he's going to take get rid of that one. But yeah, blue team has no wards on the Baron, so red side can take advantage of that and possibly gain something. All right, here we go. Red buff is given over to Sibber. We're looking at 58 minutes right now. This is insane. Here we go. Again, Blue trying to ease on up. They just, honestly, they just need a simple team fight, and they should win this right now. Look, so, such a big wave in the bot, la bot, bot lane. That's a ginormous wave. Oh, my goodness. Blue team can have the Baron here. This is a free Baron for them. They can take this so easily if they start rushing it down. Here we go. Baron call being made. Blue side going for their second. Red Team knows about it too. If Let's Jace can get there, he can possibly steal it. Let's see, Jace right now, 7,000 on the health. Can Amumu hit the smite? Here we go, Jace and Velkos. That's about 1,000 at first. It goes down, oh! Red Side takes the Baron. Here they go, Sabana now in the pit on top of Caitlyn. Here oh we go, gosh. Tarek is gonna go down here. Double kill for Sabana. I'm just gonna continue the chase on the hunt. Nice spell shield. Here we go, Sivir now on top of Morgana. Oh no, blue side. Unfortunate turn of events, and this could be the game-winning push at this point. It's definitely around here, but it Caitlyn is, and it Kennen. It is still Caitlyn and Kennen. They do They're so much damage. They're biggest amount of damage. There is an exhaust, though, available. Here we go. Minions going into the base. They need to try and end this. About a minute on the death timer. There's another inhibitor that's going down, waiting for minions to come in. Too. Here we go. Minions are coming in. What can Kennen do? Kennen going in. Gets the big stun off. Trying to do what he can to save the game. It doesn't matter at this point. Kaylin not able to do a whole lot. She does have those headshots. She's she going to try it. She gets one kill. She not enough. Belkos going to go down. Kaylin. Not able to do it, and Red Side and an hour game takes the victory. Wow, that was crazy from start to finish. That, that was that was something right there. So good job by Um for moving on to the next round. As you guys can tell, we need a break from that one. <laughs> we'll be back here with more League of Legends just after this quick break as we set up the next teams. I gotta say though, Blue Side. So close, but it was Belkos, really smart. Layering that CC, you interrupt a Mumu, and you can't stop that smite uh -huh. from going through at that point. Um, that was so smart, yeah, knocking up. It was a good up. job, and Shabana came over the wall at the last moment, too, so they, they did have the ability to yep. secure it. And they cleaned up. Yeah, yeah they, they cleaned up pretty good. With that, guys, we will be right back. Woo! I've already lost my voice this weekend.